I'm going to walk you through all the Hogwarts Legacy achievements and in-game trophies that were recently published online by Epic Games accidentally, but as they are a official store vendor of the Hogwarts Legacy game, they would have access to this information for their PC client. And for that reason alone, I am confident that these are all legitimate, but they're very much subject to change as the majority of the trophies are bronze currently, and I can imagine they'll be upgraded to silver or gold closer to launch, well, some of them anyway. I'm also going to drop a polite spoiler warning here as well, but that said, in my honest and personal opinion, many of these achievement trophies are quite obvious choices from a gameplay perspective and the storyline achievements we'll go through at the end of this video are also quite ambiguous which also makes sense because you've got to remember that these achievements will be visible on people's consoles as soon as they download the game when it releases on February the 10th so you don't want ground shaking spoilers in them if people are curious enough to look before they do play the game. On top of that Epic Games also didn't accidentally release their hidden achievements as you can see here by this entry. So those are the real spoilers that we won't be discussing in this video. But let's start with the game's general achievements, and that's the sort who makes an entrance, where we'll need to complete the introduction and finish the sorting ceremony, which we've already been teased with so far. Now, I reckon that introduction quest line is that trip to Gringotts with Professor Fig, where we face off against Ranrock, as the robes we're wearing match up with that of the recently revealed character creator screen at the start of the game, as well as the sorting hat ceremony being shown back in the reveal trailer two years ago. Now, our next trophy requires us to attend our first class in Hogwarts with Alan Tu, the game director, recently stating that there will be mandatory classes we'll have to attend that are in the main narrative storyline with other optional classes popping up on your map during your playthrough, which you don't have to attend, by the way. So you'll pick this achievement up once you just kind of progress the main story. We then have the achievements of spending five talent points, followed by another, which is spending all talent points with each talent point corresponding to leveling up in game. So every time you do level up you'll get one point to spend in the talent tree menu which we also saw in that state of play trailer back in March. Now those two trophies are followed by challenge accepted where you'll need to complete all tiers of one challenge which were recently shown to us in the gameplay showcase with challenges being a core part of the game for XP generation and rewards. Now let me give you an example here because after we collect a field guide page hidden outside the Hufflepuff common room and if we just zoom in at the top right hand corner it says one out of two meaning we'd need to collect a second second page to finish this first tier of this challenge with the second tier perhaps requiring us to collect four field guide pages and so on and so forth up the tiers this is how you're kind of going to get this achievement now this also brings us nicely onto our next trophy where we'll need to complete all collections which was another activity shown in our pause menu as you can see here where we'll need to collect all the hidden collectibles dotted around the game and the pickup of the field guide page we just discussed is another example of a collectible as you can also see here on the menu now next up we have the Good Samaritan trophy which requires us to complete all side quests and even though we haven't seen a full quest walkthrough yet, I'm really hoping we get that before launch by the way, we were teased with two in the recent showcase so if you want 100% completion in this game you're going to need to complete all of these optional side quests when they do pop up on your map and that also goes for Loom of Improvement here which we'll obtain for upgrading a piece of gear as well as Third Times a Charm which requires us to upgrade a piece of gear three times. Now we have actually seen the upgrade panel for gear in the room of requirement and this is important in my opinion because this does inform us that there will be three tiers of upgrades for a single piece of equipable gear so if you want your robes to be maxed out in terms of stats you're going to need to upgrade it at the loom in the room of requirement three times and if you're enjoying this video so far or finding it informative please do leave a very swift like down below it really does help me out on youtube so thank you very much and while you're down there i'm also running a hogwarts legacy game giveaway you just need to be a cheeky subscriber of the channel to enter and and the link is in the pinned comments, so best of luck to you. Now let's move on to some spell and combat centric achievements here, with our first one being Keen Sense of Spell, and by the way, whoever's named these achievements has clearly had some fun doing so, but with this one, we'll need to invoke Ancient Magic for the first time, and I imagine this will probably be during a quest line where it's introduced rather than us purposefully casting it in combat, because that is what this trophy is all about, where we'll need to use Ancient Magic on every enemy in the game, and referencing that recent gameplay showcase once more, if we zoom in on the Ancient 
ancient magic bars, well, what is I'm theorizing to be the ancient magic bars because it hasn't been confirmed yet, you'll notice that they do fill up after successfully landing spells and building up combo points. And when they're full, I am also theorizing that we'll be able to use one ancient magic finisher spell, as we've seen in that state of play trailer, to kind of demolish or one shot our enemies. And this all fits in with the raising expectations achievement here, where we'll need to reach a combo of 100 as a multiplier. So essentially landing every single spell consistently up to 100 times, as well as dodging and counter-attacking all incoming offensive spells with our combo streak resetting if we do take damage. Now next up, we'll need to defeat 50 enemies using the Protrificus Totala spell. And this confirms to me that this spell is perhaps more orientated towards an instant stealth takedown during stealth gameplay whilst utilizing that disillusionment charm, which turns into a kind of one-shotter ability rather than just using it in combat as a temporary stun, which I'm sure we'll be able to do, but I just don't think it's going to have the same damage effect comparatively to that one with stealth. We'll also need to defeat enemies in all battle arenas here, which I believe is an in-game mini-game, which is a lead-on from the Crossed Ones Dueling Club tutorial in the Clock Tower. So with this one, I'd expect difficult bosses dotted around the game, which we'll need to challenge in a battle arena in a similar format to the Ronin in Ghost of Tsushima. And whilst we're dueling these enemies, we may be using that fan favorite spell, that being Flipendo, which was a spell that doesn't actually appear in the books, but does appear in the Cursed Child. So I believe it's technically canon after it was introduced into the Philosopher's Stone PS1 game by the devs. And it's essentially a knockback jinx, which we'll need to use to actually tip over 10 cows. And even though we haven't seen any cows in the trailer so far, we have seen farms in the ASMR video and cows themselves do appear in the official concept art. So I do think this is just a little bit of fun from the developers here. Now, this is the kind of obvious gameplay achievement I was referencing earlier, where we'll need to learn all the spells in the game, which I imagine will be a gold trophy and not bronze. As game director Alan Tu stated that there's over 20 slottable spells and more essential spells in the game to learn. But let's move on from spells and talk about plants and potions, because this first achievement is called Putting Down Roots, which requires us to grow every type of plant in the game, presumably back at our room of requirement, as well as brew every single type of potion. And I've got a feeling this won't be as easy as it sounds as I imagine there's a lot of secret recipes hidden around the world in chests, rewards from side quests that we'll get, as well as recipes purchasable from specific vendors that require specific currency. But one trophy here you may enjoy picking up, and that's stunning 10 different enemies using a mandrake, which we've actually seen from the State of Play trailer already, and it will be slotted into our tool tab option, which is activated by L1 on the controller, as noted again in that recent gameplay showcase. That said, it looks like we'll need to grow them first, of course, and don't you forget to wear your earmuffs but let's move on and talk about magical creatures because our first trophy here is subduing the lord of the shore with the title being called grappling with a grap horn and this adds up nicely as we've seen several clips of the grap horn near the seaside in the trailers so i imagine this will be part of the main storyline as an introduction per se to taming magical creatures by defeating them but not killing them and then nursing them back to health in our menagerie kind of like wizarding world pokemon and the reason i say that is because we have another achievement here where we'll need to breed every type of beast so perhaps after we do save these creatures from in-game poachers by subduing them and capturing them with our newt scamander inspired suitcase we can then create an environment for them in our room of requirement for them to flourish so they then breed and provide us with resources such as fertilizer for our plants to help them grow faster and actually reduce the in-game cooldown. Now that said one of the trophies we have here is saving a dragon which will be really interesting to see how this plays out and I can only assume it's actually under attack from a large group of poachers and that's where we step in and I'd be really intrigued to know what rewards we actually get from doing so but I'm leaning towards this actually being part of the main storyline because another achievement here is to survive the troll attack on Hogsmeade which we actually see teased in that state of play trader again earlier on in the year which is most certainly a part of the main narrative and kind of will be automatically awarded to you once you kind of progress past that quest and I think the same thing goes here for this trophy called Rising from the Ashes which is rescuing the Phoenix which certainly sounds like a storyline quest to me or perhaps a side quest and we have actually seen a phoenix teased already from avalanche software in the menagerie in-game screenshot on their website because if we just zoom in above the cottage that certainly looks like a phoenix in flight 
out to me, as well as there being a portrait of the Phoenix in our Room of Requirements. So subtle hints from the studio there, especially as Forks the Phoenix is alive at this time period, and it'll be really interesting to see if it is indeed him. But I'll tell you what else is interesting, and that's finding all of the demiguise statues hidden around Hogwarts. Demiguise being a magical creature that could turn itself invisible and tell the future, making it extremely difficult to catch. And we actually see one of these statues in Gryffindor Common Room, which has got me thinking that there will be other statues placed in the other common rooms, so I reckon multiple playthroughs will be needed in different houses to actually get this trophy, unless we can use the Polyjuice Potion to sneak into other house common rooms, so let's just wait and see. But in the interim, let's go through all the exploration achievements here, because our first one is unlocking all the flu flames around the world, which will be our fast travel option on the map, and no need to run up and interact with these torches, by the way, to activate them. They automatically pop up on your map if you get close to one, so it's essentially a vicinity activation activation and I think it's going to be quite hard to miss them. We also have the trophy here of reaching the highest point in the castle, that being the headmaster's upper study, which is exciting and very iconic in the wizarding world, with the headmaster of course speculated to be Sirius Black's great-grandfather in this time period, that being Professor Phineas Nigellus Black, who was very famous as the most unpopular headmaster of Hogwarts, so I reckon this will be a questline achievement. But moving away from Hogwarts though, we have to visit the Poitier Coast, which to me is an important location comparatively to others. Otherwise, it wouldn't kind of be an achievement, of course. So I reckon the only way that we can visit this coast is flying across water to get to it, or perhaps it's a late game location trophy that's crucial to the storyline and only accessible after we've progressed far enough through the game. But speaking of flying, we have another achievement here where we'll need to be a Milder's time in all broom races, which we've seen a glimpse of in previous footage already. So flying through rings and beating a timer, which I think is a pretty common mechanic we've seen throughout single player and multiplayer games. So I would expect something very similar here. Now as for Amilda, she could be our flying instructor at Hogwarts but I'm leaning towards it being another student in the game who is a solid broom handler and has explored everywhere outside of Hogwarts leaving these kind of trials for us to kind of beat her at. And as we're on the topic of exploring outside Hogwarts we'll need to discover all Cairn dungeons which I interpret as hidden underground challenges filled with enemies that we can enter by discovering these Cairn stones and using the Revelia spell to open up the entrance. And I can't see these actually being shown on the map. I think they're going to be secrets and we're going to have to work hard to try and identify them and find them in game and I think the same thing goes for these Merlin trials which confirms to me that Merlin does have an importance in the game and I really encourage you to check out James from Expector Go's theory videos on Merlin I'll link them below of course but yeah I do think these are going to be really challenging puzzle trials that reward us with ancient magic spells which is kind of my thinking or perhaps it's also related to this achievement where we can view all pensive memories of Merlin as a reward which we can kind of make out in this small dungeon clip here and if you didn't know what what a pensive is, it's essentially a dish used to review and store memories. So perhaps Merlin has left these here only for those of us who can wield ancient magic to then enter his trials and obtain these unique rewards by reviewing his memories. Now, another trophy we have here, though, is following butterflies to treasure, which, in my opinion, will replicate or be similar to the fox den mechanic in Ghost of Tsushima, where you come across a fox while exploring who will then lead you to different shrines across the country for a reward. Now, these are very nice animations, of course, but I do think it gets quite tedious after the 20th time you do it, in my honest opinion. Now, let's move on and discuss the companion and storyline achievements here. And again, I don't think there's any major spoilers here, but I will drop another polite warning here just in case. And let's first start with the relationship quest lines because we have Natsai Onai of Gryffindor noted here, as well as Sebastian Sallow of Slytherin and Poppy Sweeting of Hufflepuff, which begs the question, where is our Ravenclaw relationship trophy? And is there even a Ravenclaw storyline at all? Well, I do think so, yes, because Hogwarts Legacy recently announced Amit Thacker on Twitter as a Ravenclaw classmate will meet in game, but not necessarily necessarily a companion in terms of a prominent storyline like the other three which warrant achievements which I do find interesting because these next four achievements that do follow these are awarded to us if we enter the map chamber in your respective house that of course being Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff but interestingly there is this other achievement which states meet Charles Rookwood in the map chamber and you may recall that one of the main antagonists in this game is the dark wizard known as Victor Rookwood so my theory here is that Charles is the main Ravenclaw storyline which warrants an achievement who is subsequently related to Victor Rookwood and is our arch nemesis throughout the storyline kind of like what Draco is to Harry per se and this map chamber is where we hit our in-game crossroads where we'll pick up variations of the game's ending so for example do we fight alongside Charles and his dad or brother who I'm assuming is Victor Rookwood or do we choose to fight against them and try and save the wizarding world now that is just an enthusiastic theory there but based on this other achievement which is defeating
defeating Ranrock the Goblin, interestingly noted as Hero of Hogwarts by the way, I could definitely see this Goblin Rebellion and a whole host of Dark Wizards attacking Hogwarts to obtain this ancient magic source and we either choose to assist them or defeat them depending upon what side we wish to take and subsequently ending up in this map chamber to confront Ravenclaw's most intelligent student, that being Charles Rookwood who has discovered this ancient magic source for himself leading to this achievement. Now that all said, quite a theory indeed I know, but one of the most exciting trophies noted here for me is wielding a Deathly Hallow and it doesn't specify which one but I've got a feeling it'll be the Elder Wand as it has changed hands very frequently since its creation with the Cloak and Stone being passed down within the families of Ignotus and Cadmus themselves. Now as for our silver trophies which I think will be upgraded to gold in due course we then have to reach level 40 which I presume is our max level in this game as well as winning the House Cup which I also think is another narrative quest achievement for finishing the game. As Alan too said that the house point system will be in the game itself but it's not something that we can grind out inside quests for kind of house points. It's present in the story but that's pretty much it. Now as for our platinum trophy which is noted as earning all the trophies that we've just discussed as well as the hidden ones that we haven't seen, I think that to get this we'll also need to complete the four house playthroughs to achieve this based on the house map room achievements that we've just discussed but we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. But I'll tell you what you don't need to wait and see for and that's a full breakdown on how combat works as well as what all these buttons, tabs and options mean on your screen. So click the video on your screen right now to get up to speed before you jump into Hogwarts Legacy and I'll see you there in just a second. And if you're still watching though, my big thanks to those of you who are in the Reloads Club and support me on YouTube via membership. I make these videos in my spare time so it means an incredible amount. Thank you very much. And again, cheers for watching and hopefully I will see you in that next video in just a moment.